curious and exciting topics to share with you. As attendees of the Handi Supply Curiosity Club, you are now all members, provided you adhere to our philosophy. Ex curiositas scientia. We pledge to learn without prejudice in pursuit of our mutual goal, perpetual noviceship. We admit that it is impossible to know everything about anything, and thus we remain perpetually curious and perpetually novice. This is our flag and our mascot, Franklin. The lightning bolt represents mm -hmm. the receipt of knowledge, the enlightenment of illumination, the resonance of truths understood. It awakens and excites us and makes us hungry for more. And now we are very happy to introduce comedy sports Patrick Short. Patrick has led in corporate improv workshops since 1989. With the help of the International Applied Improvisation Network, he's developed a series of workshops for design thinking. a mark next August of 1,000 straight weekends of shows, which is kind of cool, without missing a weekend. Came close a couple of times, but uh, we've made it. Uh, we also uh, teach improv to adults, to middle schoolers, high schoolers, and even elementary school kids in summer camps. We tour uh, the Comedy Sports Show, which is an improv-based uh, sporting event based on audience <laughs> suggestions. Uh, to corporate, church, school, association, clients, private parties, mitzvahs, you name it. Uh, write a check, we'll be there. <laughs> and uh, believe me, there are associations who meet for things that you, I still don't know what they were. Uh, uh, just to give you an example, the last uh, couple of weeks, uh, oh, we also need, um, teach us, uh, apply, we apply in proper businesses, and we've done a bunch of that the last couple of weeks to a technical sales company. I worked with Brightworks, who's upstairs in this building. And I um, uh, worked at the city of Milwaukee, uh, the one here in Oregon. And uh, uh, shows we've done uh, for Linfield College on Saturday, we're at Pacific University Sunday night, Friday, we're at Concordia University. Uh, we appear for, I think, next week for State Farm Insurance and the Oregon Regional Association of Nurse Anesthetists. We're having a meeting. <laughs> so they got to meet, everybody's got to meet. And we entertain them with a, a <coughs> fast improv show. Where we get off doing corporate workshops, um, we started in 1989. It was with County Sports in San Jose, California. And uh, some guys walked up just after the show and said, we want to think like you. Cool. And it turns out they were from Apple. They were working on a project that wasn't going very well. It was something really, really sexy like a driver or something. Or a series of drivers, but it wasn't going very well, and they were infighting, and they recognized that. And as a team building thing, they came to our show, and then they went, well, maybe these guys have something to teach us. We have no idea. So we took our County Sports 101 syllabus and went to the Apple uh, campus for six weeks and taught them. And at the end, they wrote us a check, and we looked at the check and went, we need a new business. We better figure out what we're doing. So 22 years later, hopefully, we figured out a little bit about what we're doing. And um, so we'll take it from there. We, the workshops get people to participate uh, in ways, with each other in ways that they don't normally expect to do. Uh, they usually have fun that they don't expect. Uh, my greatest thing is when we're reflecting at the end of the workshop, almost every time somebody says, I found out what we we're gonna do today, and I thought it was gonna be the worst day of my life, and it was awesome. And that happens almost every time. So if you were forced to be here, it'll be okay. <laughs> Um, if you volunteer to be here, great, awesome, awesome. Uh, So what we're gonna do today is talk a little bit about how improv uh, can uh, illuminate some things in design thinking. So uh, design thinking is a uh, sort of a discipline, if you will, or a methodology that involves ideation, research, and prototyping in a fast manner, and usually in a team manner. And when you hear team, improv leaps out, because we are awesome at 
using what we know to get people to work together and to say yes to each other. How many people have ever had an improv class? Cool. It's spreading. We're going to take over the world eventually. <laughs> and it'll be okay because everybody will be saying yes. And that's a good thing. So, <coughs> we're, uh, improv can particularly shine a light, though, is in the ideation process. How many people have ever been in a brainstorming session where you got together, right, and people are supposed to come up with a bunch of ideas? For how many people did that suck? Um, several of you. For how many people didn't it? Congratulations. <laughs> I'm really surprised, actually. Usually when I ask that question, it's 90%. It sucks. Uh, how many people have been in a job and they had a great idea and they got slammed when they brought it up, right? Why does that happen? You think? Right. I'm sorry. Right. Reasons. Um, Come up with some. Let's political. Look. Political so, reasons. Uh, sure. Financial. Not invented here. All right. Not invented here is a huge one. Yeah. Everybody's trying to take possession of whatever project that you're working on, and they all do it in a different way. Yeah, that's absolutely. Who's who's got a hand on the steering wheel is very very important. <laughs> absolutely. Uh, financial reasons can come up too. Those might be the best reasons to say no to something ultimately, but. Um, if it's shot down before it's been looked at, then it didn't make any sense. So what we're going to do today is work on some ways to have uh, improv touch the brainstorming process and the idea process. Some of these things will be useful to you as you work by yourself. Some of them will be useful to you in groups. And it's going to mean that you have to play games. So we understand about adults playing games. It gets a little weird. Some people think it's touchy-feely. I think it's great. I mean, that's what I do for a living. I'm the luckiest man on the face of the earth. That's why we're number four, if you don't know who we are. Um, we have numbers on our jerseys. Uh, I get to play all the time. How cool is that? Right. So the m biggest reason adults don't like to play is that uh, they think they're going to look stupid and they're going to be embarrassed. And here's the secret. It's very important. Why do I say that? It's true. It's true. It's true. Why is it true, though? Because everybody cares about themselves. Exactly. They don't worry about themselves in that situation, right? <laughs> so, when we're using design thinking and we're getting going, it's uh, what we want to do is we want to be generating a ton of ideas. We want to do everything low resolution. We want to prototype really quickly. We want to fail a lot. That's improv. Get going. Make the right decision. Do stuff until something works. Recognize that some things worked and some things didn't. And recognize that failure is awesome. Because without failure, without mistakes, nothing good is going to happen. If you're afraid of making mistakes, you're never going to do anything. And that's what we teach. That's where it comes together. So let's start uh, with our, our covenant. I stole this concept from Pat Riley. He used to be a successful NBA coach. And the concept is that uh, we're here. You're spending time here. I'm spending time here, and we're making an investment. Now, sometimes when I work with companies, the investment's a lot larger than it is tonight. But uh, we're here. Let's not waste the time, so let's put something into it. If the amount of energy that you put into something tonight is arms folded, and head over, and we can't hear you, and I don't know, and that kind of stuff, you're, you're robbing yourself, but worse, you're stealing from everybody else in the room. Just put a little into it. We'll be fine. Right? The second thing is you probably don't want to have a bottle of beverage in your hand while we're playing. But have near access to it. <laughs> okay, so let's. Um, uh, oh, one more rule or set of rules. If you don't feel comfortable doing an activity, you can sit out, but you can't lure anybody else out. That's not fair to them. And you can't ever <coughs> comment on it if you didn't do it. Cool? Good? All right. Yeah? yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you for leading the way. All right, let's get up, circle up. This is going to be really great for your uh, web broadcast. Sorry, web broadcast people. <laughs> Okay. And there's plenty of room down here. Nobody wants to stand near me. I get that. But cool. And this is going to be a little tight. So let's uh, all the way to the, to the chairs, to the wall, take advantage of this. Here's an open space. Let's fit people in. It's going to be super tight. But we're going to do it anyway. Cool. So the first game we're going to do is. Um, it's really unfortunately named, but there you go. It's called Pass the Clap. So, um, Anna, I'm going to turn to Anna. We're going to make eye contact clap at the same time. Ready? Beautifully done. 
Turn that way, make eye contact, clap at the same time. Make sure you make eye contact. We're trying to be perfect, keep it going. We're trying to be perfect, but we're not worrying if it's not. Okay? Take a shot at it. Right. Now that we've seen it, we can go probably a teeny weeny. Good. Cool. Make sure you make eye contact and be assured that the game is going to change. Okay? See? After today, I want you to notice in your workplace or if you're in school, notice how few people actually look each other in the eye. So, okay, keep going, keep going. Now that we know what we're doing, we can probably go twice as fast, right? Okay? But make eye contact, don't just turn the fire away. Also, the game is changing, so start focusing. Um, remember to take home along. So, uh -huh. Ah! Ah! Oh, sorry. Try not to bang into the equipment here. It's a, the room's a little tight for this, uh, but it would be awesome and amusing. So the goal is to, if you're not in equidistance, get there really quickly. And then if, if your people move, you've got to move. So you've got to keep moving. Okay? We ready? Go. What? Awesome, let's 
screens. All right, back away from each other. All right, back away. I want you to pick a different sun and a different moon. And for anybody who didn't pick anybody the first time was just wandering around, pick somebody this time. <laughs> I can tell. And uh, this time, if you're not in equidistance, move toward it. But you don't have to get there. And move slowly. So when we teach slow motion, when we're doing improvisational companies, we go to slow motion, we always keep telling people, move slower than you think you are. And then slower than that. So no big steps, no running, no quick motions. Move slowly. If you're not in equidistance, you don't have to get there. Just move toward it. And we'll see what happens. All right, everybody got their new sun and new moon? Go. Again, not big steps, slowly, slowly. Move slower than you think you have to. Remember, you don't have to get there, you just have to move toward it. If you do get there, that's cool. Consideration. Yeah. It's a good set of words. What else? You know, you got much closer to being equidistant. It was still moving, but it was kind of like this little jiggly movement. It was. Mm -hmm. The first one was still not even close. I mean, a couple people might have been there, but most people were not. There were still people making big moves around the outside when I stopped it. So I told you you didn't have to get there, and yet you, for all intents and purposes, got there. Interesting. So what does that say about how we work? Go on. Goal oriented? Well, the second time you knew what you were doing, so the strategy and tactics could be different. That's something to keep in mind. The first time you do something, you might fail because you've never done it before. That's okay. You'll be better at it when you do it again. And you'll be better at it when you do it the next time after that. Cool. What else can we take away from this? Can I share something? In the first one, some people made some big adjustments kind of near the end of the round, they kind of ran around the outside. That's cool, they had to. They were away from, they wanted to get deep with this. And uh, what that resulted through was boom, all the way through the entire group. Their panic, if you want to call it that, went through the entire group as chaos. And that happens in a lot of groups, companies. Kind of important. And if you're ever in a work group, keep that in mind. Your panic does affect everybody else. Right. Cool. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, something that's our last real warm-up, uh, and this comes from the, uh, Augusto Boal in the Theater of the Oppressed. It sounds very, very cool. It sounds very, very timely. <laughs> See if you can attach it to that. I don't know. It's just a warm-up exercise. When I say walk, I want you to walk through the space without running into anybody. So if you're going to walk into somebody, don't. Turn, right? Be aware of the people around you. There are going to be two commands, walk and stop. Also, don't run into chairs or anything like that. There isn't much space, but just move as you can. Walk. Stop. Walk. Stop. All right, stop becomes walk, and walk becomes stop. Stop. Walk. Stop. 
two new commands. When I yell out name, you yell out your first name. 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 Cool. The next one is jump. If you're not moving, just a little two-foot jump. And if you are moving, just a little hop. Kind of that says, yeah, I heard that. Okay? All right. So jump. Name. Stop. Name. Well, jump. Jump. Name. Name becomes jump. Jump becomes name. What? Name. Jump. Name. Walk. Name. Okay, I'm going to add two more commands. When I say clap, everybody claps at the same time. Clap. See that? We all clap within a quarter second of each other on the first try. Is that outstanding? Amazing. Clap. The next one's twist. If you're not moving, hips into it. If you are moving, just a little to let you know. Yeah, we heard that. Okay, so twist. Clap. Twist. Stop. Stop. Name. Jump. yourselves 
in order of, actually let's not even, let's drop the year off of it. From January 1st to December 31st, your birthday. Arrange yourself without talking. Just do the best you can. Okay? Now, if I said, you have to do it correctly, but you can't talk, how could you do it? Oh. Uh, well, I don't want to hear. I don't want you to talk. I'm seeing a couple. I'm seeing a couple tools already. I'm going to push you a little bit, though. You can't use finger signs. And you can't use your driver's license, ah. which is very clever. <laughs> How else could you do it? Don't tell me. Either mine it or show people so that we you know how we've got. <laughs> clapping thing. Okay, now I'm going to tell you that you can't clap and you can't write it down. Okay, how else could we do it? What other, what other tools can you come up with that you could do this? And there's a reason I'm doing this. I'm not being, I'm not being a jerk. Well, I might be, but I'm, I'm not doing it without purpose. What other tools? Oh, we have the, the old uh, horse thing. Yeah, all right. Okay, but I'm not letting you stomp your feet anyway. That's five tools you've come up with already. What else? Ooh. Okay, go ahead and physically touch somebody and see if they can figure out what your birthday is. Okay, but now I'm not going to let you do that. Cool. That's six tools I've wiped out. What else do you have? Okay, anybody got another one? All I'm doing here is I'm trying to push you to think beyond the first idea. First idea might be great, but there might be other really, really cool ideas. You want to know the first time I found out the tool that you could use? I was working with sixth graders. And this is the tool some of them use. And they actually... Uh, just wrote their own down, but they would hand a notepad over to people who didn't have them so that they could type theirs in too. And then they walked a long way. It took a little while, but that was kind of cool. Um, that's, a, that's a solution we probably wouldn't have had a few years ago. It'd be difficult on an old school cell phone. Can you think of anything else that we could do? No? All right, go verbally and find out how quick it is. I don't want to actually try to do your best to arrange it. Company and 
and uh, I'm going to turn to the public. What is a, uh, a product function that you wish existed? Something that did something. Don't name a product or anything like that, but what is a function that maybe a product could answer for you? Your first idea is your best idea. Choice. What? Choice. Choice? Decision. A decision making thing. Okay, you're going to release a product that will make decisions for people. Okay, so uh, everybody can participate in this. These guys are a little bit on the spot, and we have to support them. So I'm going to ask questions, and we're going to go down the line, and each person will answer. Just first thing that pops in your head is absolutely going to be the right answer. That's the improv thing. First thing that comes in your head is usually correct. And we're going to support that by everybody. Uh, when they do their answer, everybody will go, yes. All right? Be brilliant. So we need to make a product that will make decisions for people. What will we make it out of? Um, durable materials. Durable materials? Yes. 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 All right, cool. It's made out of durable materials. What color is it going to be? Steel gray. Steel gray. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Uh, this is the tough one. What are we going to call this? Just the first thing that comes in your head is right. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, no. <laughs> it's the oh no! Excellent. Great. What powers the oh no? What what? What powers it? Um, the sun. Sun powers yes. yes. Excellent. And uh, how will we package it? In plastic. In yes. plastic. Yes. Excellent. It's an ascension there, but there you go. Uh, drop the uh, drop preconceived notions here. We can fix. Uh, uh, Non-correct things exactly. later, right? Um, great. Who's our primary target market? Teenagers. Teenagers? Yes! yes. Well, they need it more than anybody, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you all to remember your specific answers because we might, <coughs> we might have to, we might not. We might come back to them. Uh, what's the retail price? $29.99. Yes! <laughs> That's awesome. And um, finally, um, we're going to have a whole series of commercials for this. And uh, what's what's the main theme of the commercial? Trees. Trees. Yes. I'm gonna make decisions with trees. That's awesome. <laughs> now I need you guys to circle up, and in 30 seconds, I need you to come up with a five-second jingle for the Ono. Oh circle up <laughs> that you can all do. <laughs> See where I just got. Okay? You can select the representative to do it or you can do it together. Let's hear it. Okay, can we do it? Ready? You got it? Oh, no, you don't know. Now you know. All right! Yes! Brilliant! That's awesome. Look cool. how fast we've changed the entire field of decision making. Just right there. Okay? It's a brilliant product. And that cheap, it should sell. <laughs> um, maybe we want some other colors, but I, I'm not going to say. Okay, great. So, uh, that's awesome. Let's give these guys a round of applause. <laughs> and you can see, I'd like um, seven more volunteers to come up and stand. It's a different, this is a different game. So if you're thinking, oh, I got a little sauce, forget about it. In a normal workshop where I was spending three hours, we'd repeat all these things so that everybody could experience them. I'm counting three. I'm thinking we need four more. Cool. That's six. We need one more person. Okay. Awesome. Great. So, uh, welcome. What's your name? Amanda. Amanda? Cool. Uh, Amanda, what's something uh, that you're passionate about that just is awesome? Graphic design. I would like you to think about a huge project, something totally audacious. The biggest thing, you're already thinking of something. And what I don't want you to do is have that little editor in your head go, no, that's a terrible idea. I want, you've already thought of it, I'm sure. I'm sure you did. You've already filed past it. I saw it in your eyes. There was something in there. I want you to think of some big thing that you could do in, in graphic design or even design. Some huge thing. Okay. Um, what's one thing you'd like to change in the world? Um, people treating one another. Okay. Um, cool. 
you want to release a design-inspired project that will get people to treat each other more nicely. See what we did there? High five. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm going to want you to repeat that. And you can use your own words if you like. Then we're going to go down the row to our other six people. And they're all going to uh, add on to it, but they're going to say yes, but. Okay? So let's see what happens. Um, what's your project? Uh, I'm going <coughs> to make a product with graphic design. Okay. Yes, but. Yes, but. Maybe we should consider also how, what language we use to do it. In. Okay. Yes. Yes, but we don't want to make mean people feel like they're left out. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yes, but everybody can feel good. Yes, but we should use big data to do infographics so that we understand. Yes, but I think it would be most effective if we redesigned the Statue of Liberty's clothing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but maybe we should just leave it the way it is. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Great. We're going to do the same thing, and then we're going to go down the line, and we're going to all say things that start with yes and. Okay? S say it. it doesn't have to be word for word, what your ideas are. <laughs> yes, and they'll feel a little more financially stable. Yes, and we can put it on the internet. <laughs> yes, and the mean people will love it. <laughs> yes, and uh, it'll be good for your music. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. How different were those two? Not much. Not much? I don't know. It was, it, was, with you again. it was easier. It was easier to find the yes and yeah. answer. I, I thought the yes and answers were slightly more possible. I think it was more than slightly for the most part. Somebody tried to subvert the yes but because they're nice. But, um, and not to say the rest of you aren't, but they, they kind of subverted it. The natural thing, if you're thinking in terms of yes but, is for things to be, well, let's, mm, I, I don't know kind of attitude, and yes and, you throw stuff out, and that's what we want to be doing in ideation. We want the ideas. We don't care how ridiculous they are at that point. We want ideas to come out. And we've all been in situations where our ideas were slapped down immediately as being unrealistic, as being unaffordable, as being not invented here, as being uh, not part of the mission that we've set up and great ideas go by the wayside. And we don't want that to happen as much as we can help it. We can change the culture. People in this room can do that. Thank you, guys. Give that round of applause. So next, how many people came in the student group together? Okay. Um, I would like you guys to divide yourselves into um, four different groups. And one group stands here, one group stands here, one group stands here, and one group stands here. Okay? Make it as even as you can in terms of numbers. Okay, so I've got a three here. We need to we need to move somebody over there. Cool, thank you for that. We have six there and four there and four there. So one going there, one going here, one from this group going here. Awesome, thank you. Now, the rest of the people, if you can find a group to uh, associate with, just these are great groups associated with one of them. Well, let's keep the numbers about equal. Okay. Most of these will write. 
There you go. Um, each group's also going to have a bunch of post-its. So I'll keep it simple. You guys get orange ones. You guys get blue ones. Yeah, they're much more awesome than the white ones. Um, Lawrence University in Wisconsin. I went there and did a presentation, and I got a few of post-its for them. It was awesome. It was the best. Um, I got paid, too. But what we're going to do now is find some wall space. You guys over there, perfect. Here, I, I love the, the, this is a great space. Right there. Um, I think this group can probably use this space. And I'm going to aim this group um, on that blank wall. I think would be OK. So pass the post-its around in the group, divide them up. So that everybody has, I don't know, five or six of them. Don't count them exactly. Don't worry about that. What we're going to do is this. In three minutes, your group is going to design the greatest restaurant ever. And what I mean by that is, you're not going to do it from a top-down thing. I just want each person to think about, what should this have? Say it to the, a group, not the whole group, but to your group, and write it down on the post-it and slap it up on your surface. Okay? So if everybody does about four a minute, you should, we should have 20 or 25 ideas for the greatest restaurant ever in our group. Okay? So you got about three minutes. Start writing, start telling each other, go. Each idea can be as simple as three parking outs. Just slap it up. <laughs> Don't wait to get agreement. Just tell people and then put it up. Don't wait to get agreement. Just say it and write it. <laughs> I have one more pen if anybody needs a pen. Great. I also have more posters than anyone else. Okay, start thinking if money were no object, and I mean really no object, how would you change what you're putting up if money were absolutely no object? You had billions of money in this restaurant. <laughs>
Okay, about 20 more seconds to really make this sing. Specific foods. Legos. Macaroni and Legos. Cereal bar. Okay, let's pause. If you're, if you're writing, finish it and put it up. If you haven't started writing a new one, hold on to them. All right? Cool. So here's what we're going to do next. I want you to keep your pens with you. Um, I'll collect the extra post-its that we have. Um, you need to keep your pens with you because um, we're going to be doing another exercise after this one. Um, is there someone in each group who has a, a notebook or a notepad with them where they could uh, become a, a sort of the person in charge of their group? Every group have one of those? I have a notepad. Okay. It'll take just one page. It'll take just one page. It's not a huge, huge deal here. All right, so now the job is in your groups to look at your things on the wall together, and it's important that it's together. And I don't want you to judge things as negative, but I want you to see if you can agree in the next two minutes on a theme and a name for your restaurant based on, based on not new stuff that you're doing, but what's in there already, what you've already done. Come up with a theme and a name. And then when you do that, have the person write it on the pad, and I'll have another instruction for you after that. So you have about two minutes. Those are the two words that popped out at me. We have a five-star family time for us to arrive. We have a five-star family time for us to arrive. We have a five-star family time for us about 30 more seconds. Just name and theme. So just the theme and the name. Everybody gets in for Yeah. 
Ten seconds, final decision. No pressure. <laughs> cool. We don't have animals in here. <laughs> you don't have what? Animals. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to start with this group. And we're going to have each group share. Their leader will share with us what the name of the restaurant is, the theme, if it's not obvious from the name, and then what the 10 most important elements selected by the group are. OK? Amanda, did you get elected? Way to step up. All right. Hey, we've got to focus on the Oh, you're not done. We're going to do it silently because we're, we're going. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is the Airborne Freedom Cafe slash bar. Um, and it's sort of adventure and mystery for me. Uh, the most important elements were um, tigers, plush furniture, giant elements, bar, booth, moves, uh, attractive weight staff, trampolines, open 24-7. Uh, it travels. And travels. <laughs> travels from food. <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah. 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 Money is no object, right? Yeah. 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 Oh. Yeah. Cool. Let's go to this group. Our uh, restaurant is Disco Ponies. It's a place where livestock likes to dance. That's a theme for you. And uh, we have ponies, disco balls. Uh, you eat while sitting on a giraffe. <laughs> you have roller skates. There's weapons involved. Uh, your food served with a side of diamonds. There's also a zoo inside with monkeys. And there's lots of whiskey and uh, rivers of bacon. Someday maybe you can go. What's going on with this group's restaurant? So the name of our restaurant is Super Five Star Family Fun Time. <laughs> and the theme is family fun with the whole family. <laughs> and we technically have 15 instead of 10. But it's fireworks, um, free money, bowling alley, bouncy castle, bacon, pinball machine, free puppies, open bar, food, wave pool, daycare center, mac and cheese, local ingredients, tire, um, tree tire, and sushi. <laughs> So here we have Food Zoo, which is a, uh, an experiment in getting you closer to the food that you're eating as your wait staff is wearing a costume close to the portion that you ordered. We want to promote similarity there. Uh, Ultron is our bartender. <laughs> you do get to eat with your hands. There's a dessert bar, toys, live music, free cocktails, free Wi-Fi, big portions, uh, and a <coughs> bank of candy quarter machines. <clears throat> That's awesome. Yeah. All right, way to go, everybody. Let's and, a, and a petting zoo. So you can, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> you can choose your portion. Cool. So animals were important like to the couple. That's excellent. All right. So, uh, upon reflection, why would I have you do this exercise? What are we really doing? Free association. Free association? Yes. Your, your answers can't be wrong, by the way. If you felt, if you felt it, it's real. To show how little about food restaurants are. How little about food restaurants are. That's an interesting. <laughs> I, that is really awesome. That's really really awesome. Oftentimes when you're designing something, it's really not about the thing, right? The most some of the most successful products are not about the thing. Think about Apple stuff. A whole lot of what Apple has done is not really about the thing. That's a great concept. What else? There's lots. You can't bring up people's inhibitions. Bring up people's inhibitions and just get all the ideas out there as quickly as we can. Absolutely. What else? Shorten the time frame. You have to make decisions faster. Yeah. I, 
very artificially shorten the time frames. Normally, there would be more time to play this game, but even if I give you more time, it's still a pretty short time frame. Yeah. I think we inspired each other. Was, uh, Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a huge thing that improv can bring to other disciplines, is you are much more powerful on a team than you are by yourself. Absolutely, almost 100% true. It's also more fun. Think, think when you're watching sports, somebody wins a tennis tournament or a golf tournament, they're excited for how long? 20 seconds, 30 seconds? Because if it's any longer than that, we're thinking, hoo hoo, ding ding, right? <laughs> but watch what teams do. All that champagne and beer sprayed all over everybody. In fact, the latest thing with baseball teams is to come back out of the locker room and spray the fans. 40,000 have stayed there just for the privilege. <laughs> awesome to do stuff in teams. And you can celebrate really, really little victories, and they make bigger victories. They do. Uh, the inspiration that you get in improv, stand up, somebody writes stuff, or they have stuff written for them, which I think is really creepy, and then they go to a microphone, and it's them, and it's prepared, and there's a, you better like this or else antagonism with a lot of it. In improv, you build a team with the audience because you're basing it off of their ideas most of the time, almost all the time. And the biggest kick is when somebody's idea comes out and somebody else takes it and swats it in a completely unexpected and different direction. And then gives it back and forth and back. It's just giving gifts back and forth. I'm teaching my adult 101 class right now and they're just discovering this thing about, oh, I'm coming up with a wacky idea. No, come up with something, take a little step and see what the other person does with it. Holy cow, and then you can do something to that. Just little steps will get you blowing through the roof. It's awesome. By the way, you don't have to do uh, design restaurants with this activity. Right? You can do anything you want. If you get into a group that needs to have a fundraiser, start here with side orders of diamonds and bacon, sitting on giraffes and flying. I love it. It's awesome. But almost anything we can do is a, a frame game where you can drop content into it. When we played Sun and Moon before, that's what we call a jolt game, where you get realizations and, and you're made more aware. You have aha moments out of it. But a lot of what we do is frames that we can drop content into. They can be training content, or they can just be all the things we just talked about in this, freeing yourself up, realizing that it might be about something else, compressing time frames, realizing the value of other people's contributions. Okay, we're gonna do uh, another exercise real quick. It's, we're going to be going a little bit past seven, but not very far. Okay, so don't panic. I've already thrown out about six games ahead of time. So uh, pick a uh, an index card that has to be out. And well, the, the color does not matter. Just some kind of, oh, it depends. Um, be super helpful with that couple. I have a couple of little love. Uh, um, <coughs> um, these are not super artistic, but maybe you can make it happen. Does anyone else need one? You good? Okay. Cool. Oh, one more person? Cool. Uh, it can be black. Okay. Just do best with it. Um, I would like these markers back though, because they're really handy for writing on those wall size post its and not uh, screwing up people's walls, which I've done in the past. It's kind of stupid when you do it. All right. Uh, this is a game called 35. It's going to take about six or seven minutes. I would like you to take about a minute right now to think about something you want to do or to see happen that will improve the world. It could be a product, it could be a service, it could be an idea, it could be a concept. They don't have to end up relating to each other. Just whatever pops into your head is probably right. What's something that could happen that could improve the world? Product, service, concept. Think about it. Don't make whole paragraphs. A sentence will do it. A couple words will do it. A word might do it, maybe. But it has to be enough information that a person who has not seen this card before picks it up and can go, oh, I know what this is. All right? Doesn't have to have it explained to them. Keep your pens for the duration of this exercise. Because you're going to continue to need them. And 
and uh, okay, stop right and look up when you're done, and we'll try to get this moving as quick as we can. <coughs> this next thing that we're doing, um, think about it during the process, and at the end, it's another frame. We could drop anything, we could have asked you to write anything. Could be an improvement for your company, um, something you wish you were seeing in your current class. Could be anything. Right? Okay? Everybody just about done? You're in trouble with the pen writing up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you know that um, NASA spent several million dollars developing a pen that would work in zero gravity? Of course, there's a shaving issue, but if you haven't, if, you if you're able to take enough pencils, you don't have to worry about that. All right, are we ready to go? Here's what we're going to do. Everybody needs to be up for this. Uh, and this is going to be another one of those sweaty making things. What I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to say go, and I want you to race around the room, exchanging cards with people. I have already card. We just go. Okay, trade the card and move on. Right. And I want you to trade with as many, trade one card back and forth with as many people as you can until I yell stop. All right? And do don't give some don't give your card away. Right? Trade for it. Don't always have a card. Go. I want you to exchange at least four times before I yell stop. Don't read them, just exchange it. If you are reading it, you're a speed reader. Okay, stop. I'm going to need you to pair up with somebody nearby and uh, create a little space so that people have room to pair up. I pair. Um, raise your hand if you're not paired up. Just as quick as you can once you get back in this corner a little bit so people have room. Do we divide evenly? All right, see how that works? Awesome. Now, uh, this will take a second to explain. Please be patient with me. Um, well, I don't have to explain this once, we'll get through it five times. Um, in your partners, read both of them, the both you see of both cards, and whichever one you think is, uh, you guys collectively think is the better idea, that's cool. But it's not choosing just one thing. What I'm going to have you do is take seven points and allocate them between the cards. You might say that one of them is a four and one of them is a three. And when you do that, write it on the back of that card. You have seven total points between the two of you to divide between the two cards. Seven and zero, it could be six and one, it could be five and two, it could be four and three. And then you write the number on the back of the card. Like, for example, yours, you guys might decide this is a three and this is a four. You'd write a four on the back, you'd write a three on the back. Okay? I'm quite sure that's really the answer that I Which one do you think is better? You get more points. If this were theoretically, <laughs> yes, this would yeah, yeah, absolutely trump pretty much the way I think of it. Yeah. Unless it was the whole Terminator thing. Yeah. Or a paradox in the universe ending. Yeah. Having people help instead of walk away. Yeah, that's wins. pretty good. Yeah. And the next question is do we have to sell We've allocated the points. Uh, we gotta do it. No pressure. You gotta yeah. do it now. Write them on the back. Right? Okay. We're gonna have another passing period. And pass as many cards. Again, don't read them. Pass to as many people back and forth as you can. Go. Go. Hi. Okay, stop. Find a partner. Move out of the space. Allocate points. Do this in about 15 seconds. Five more seconds. Write the number. 
number on the back. Don't erase the previous number. Just write it next to the previous number. Write it next to the previous number. Don't erase or scratch out the previous number. There should be two numbers on the back of every card now. And go. Passing period. As quick as you can. If you're stuck on one side of the room, get to the other side of the room. I want you pairing up with different people. I want the cards to be completely mixed up. If you see yours again, that's cool, but don't focus. If you do see yours again, don't look at the scores. All right, freeze. Pair up as quick as you can. Allocate points, 15 seconds. <laughs> okay, write the points on the back. There should be three, three scores on the back of each one. Again, we're not crossing out or erasing. All right, go. Passing period. Go. Quick as you can. This time, the person you're exchanging with is a friend you haven't seen in years, and you're really glad to see him.
and hold the card up when you hear the number that's on the back of your card. 35. 34, 33, 32, 31, 30, 29. 29. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well yelled. Excellent. By the way, it's high for the highest score I've ever seen. Uh, it's usually between 26 and 28, including the What's our idea? A uh, teleporting machine. <laughs> uh, I can see why we didn't need that. <laughs> oh, seriously? Like the other night we finished up at Lindsay Hill and took down was 11 p.m. I would have loved to teleport back to Portland. That would have been awesome. But no, we had to drive to Dundee. All right, so that's true. Uh, were there any 28s? Uh, yeah? yeah? What do you got? Everyone has access to free education. Wow. That would be sweet. Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, and you can go down as far as you want in these things. But again, this is a frame. We could have asked anything. I asked something really very general. Um, I worked with a company last week, and I asked them, what is one thing that your company could do now to increase revenue? Mm -hmm. And the number one thing that popped out at 27 was um, uh, interview current clients for other things we could be doing for them. Sounds so simple, mm -hmm. and people don't do it. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind for the rest of your life. <laughs> the people that you're currently working with as clients have more value and are cheaper to sell to than new customers. And would that folks like Comcast would figure that out. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about. You stay with them and the price goes up. I just I just did a thing called Comcast and I upgraded to Last Plus. I'm gonna save myself three hundred and nine dollars over the next year. I've been a customer for three years. Why do they do that to me? They should just offer me the best price. And then I'd be singing their praises and right now I'm saying we're idiots. And I'm still saving my money. Well, the other thing with the 309, and here's a brilliant thing. So here's the thing when you cure the world. I, I don't need the cable TV box. I, I get by with Netflix and over-the-air digital. Um, and um, uh, watching sports on illegal feeds on the internet. Um, and I, uh, I once watched the Green Bay Packers game. I'm an owner, so I have to watch them. And uh, I watched the game on Swedish television. Nice. The commercials are great. But the Comcast <laughs> made me take the box. There was no option not to take the box. Well, I'm not going to hook it up. That doesn't matter. We're still going to come to your house, have the service thing to remove the traps on your line, and you'll have the box. So they wasted effort, time, gas, gave me a, it's a big box. I thought it'd be a little white. It's a big box. All those raw materials, all the effort in manufacturing, and it's parked. So I'm not going to use it. Because there are more stations on digital over the air than on the service they were giving. So it's really you can take this game and do anything with it, is the point. So you've also learned your current clients are your best bet. Keep that for the rest of your life. But this game you can do anything with to generate an idea. And it can happen with groups as small as eight or ten people. Below that, it gets a little weird, you start seeing the same things over and over. Mm -hmm. And another little lesson for you. Uh, did you notice the volume and the fun went up when um, I gave you a theme for the passing round? <clears throat> and there's a huge lesson in that for those of you that ever have to face the public doing anything. Face the public as a character. Don't do it as yourself. <laughs> Create a character. It sounds creepy and weird, but um, I'm actually a fairly shy person, but Patrick Short, the comedy sports guy, <coughs> not a problem. The character. This is your job. Well, it is. I've created it over a long time. I've been doing this for a very long time. But uh, it's, it's, it is a different person, and it is not exactly me. That doesn't mean I can act without integrity, but it does mean that um, I can give myself the power to do things because if I fail, it was just that character. Right? <coughs> if you've ever worried about singing, how many people have been told they're bad singers? You know, it's the worst thing anybody can do to anybody. But sing's a character. Just become a character and sing. If there's a way for you to do that, you'll be able to sing. Um, one of my favorite things about singing, by the way, is my wife had a, got a BFA in acting in college and not a very good singer. I was told by a professor that she would never be a professional actress because she can't sing. She co-owns a theater company now, which is something that person never did in their life. I'm just saying, don't let what people tell you you can't do stop you because they're usually wrong. Usually, bullies. All right, don't get into that. Life lesson.
lessons. Right, cool. We're gonna do one more thing. Let's pass the cards around to Tobias, coming both ways so that he can collect them so we don't litter. And then um, I'm gonna walk around real quick with a bag thing. You throw a pen into it unless it's your pen. If it's your pen, don't throw it in there. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like you to pair up with somebody you don't know. Now, we probably more than half this group is our students from the same class, but maybe there's somebody you don't know very well. So, cool. Thank you so much. So pair up with somebody you don't know. Thank you for Here's what we're going to do. This is the final activity, and we're going to have a quick reflection, and then uh, you can hang out and answer questions after that if you have any, uh, or you can take off, run away, and play. Um, so use this whole space so that people aren't necessarily on top of each other, right? Because this is going to be a little physical activity. It's called knife and fork. So spread, spread out so you're not right on top of another group. What I'm going to ask you to do is play this game non-verbally. And it's important that you don't talk, you can laugh, Laughing's fine, but don't talk and don't direct people physically. Like don't point, don't tell them what to do in any way, and, and don't shape them. I mean, have you form physical shapes in your group of two, but it needs to be a choice the person can make, right? So the first one, it's easy, and I'll tell you how to play the game. Form a knife and fork. Go. Don't talk, don't say I'm the knife, I'm the fork. Just go. The other person, if somebody's doing something, the other person counters. <laughs> And then you have a knife and fork. And you cannot do this wrong, right? You can't. All right, next, uh, a rose in a vase. A rose in a vase. Or if you're from the Midwest, a rose in a vase. <laughs> okay, awesome. Next one, fried egg on toast. Fried egg on toast. Whatever that means, however you want to do it. Use the floor if you want, don't if you don't want to. Alright? Do it. Don't talk about it. You talk about it. Don't talk about it. Just do it. Right? The key to this, you can laugh all you want. But don't talk about it. Alright, awesome. If you look around the room, nobody's doing this wrong. Right? Okay. Next, uh, form a uh, cellular phonification device. De a mobile phone. Right? I'm not telling you what brand. Don't talk about what brand. Just start. I'm not even talking about what era. Just whatever. You cannot do this wrong. And in fact, I, I hold this up as simplicity itself. It's awesome and it's great. Cool. Uh, if you look around, nobody did this the same. Nobody did this the same. Close, but not quite the same. All right, take your group of two and form a group of four, please. All right. And uh, we got a, a spare, no, right here. We, we divide it into four. How beautiful is that? All right, in your group of four, Form, and you're going to be tempted to talk because it's more people. You're going to be tempted to lead. Don't lead. Everybody follows. Form a microwave oven. Go. Microwave oven. <laughs> Don't say, hey, I'm this. Just do it. Okay? Cool. Couple of men moving parts. Most don't. That's cool. Oh, sounds. Nice. All right? Cool. Form a hedge in front of somebody's house. A hedge in front of somebody's house. This is a very standard thing for me. You, you would think these would all look the same, and they don't at all. Cool. All right? Awesome. What I'm asking you to do is everybody follows. Somebody starts, everybody chooses. All right, next up, uh, form uh, merge groups so we have about eight, okay? So we got a group here, we got a group here, group there. Why don't you four split so two go there and two come here, right? One group of two goes over there, one group of two is here. Great. Can this group slide this way just a little bit? Cool. In your group of eight, a bicycle built for two. Go. Again, don't talk. Don't talk. Just go. Yes, it gets harder when you have more parts.
Awesome. All right, let's do uh, something in the whole group, please. Whole group, and again, don't direct. So we just start. A pirate ship. Go. Someone starts, and we all find a place. Goldsmith building, and we're looking down from on high, whatever that means to you. The tops of our heads are the pixels. We're going to form a couple of things that you could see if you look down. So there's no reason to be on the floor, no reason to move your bodies. In fact, hands at your sides, and that way you won't be tempted to go this way. I would like you to form a capital letter W. Go. Don't direct. Just start, adjust, follow, see what happens. Look around, be aware. Maybe your first choice is not going to be your final choice because the group is moving in a different direction. Okay? And we see some people making some adjustments. We are almost there. We are almost there. We are there. That is extremely quick. Awesome job. The next thing I'd like you to do is form the numeral four in the Arabic system. That's the system that we use. What I'm saying is not the Roman system, the Arabic system. It can be open or closed. Numeral four, go. They're starting, they're looking around, they're seeing what the rest of the group is doing, making some adjustments. And uh, on more than one dangling pixel who's just fixing herself right now. Awesome! No one's ever been called a dangling pixel before. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was uh, remarkably quick. Those two things are usually very, very, very difficult. So, awesome. How about a capital letter O for get in the circle? You don't have to be precise. Great. Awesome. All right. So, what did we learn today? Yes, and. Yes, and. Excellent. What's that mean? Let's dig into that. Just be positive. Bit. What? Think positive. Think positively. Don't shut down. Add to, don't take away. Add to, don't take away. Great, right. those are all true. What else? What, what else? What? Collaborate. Collaborate. Support. Support. Support's a, a really nice, tight way to say it, but these are all correct. No answer is wrong. And nonverbal is as important as verbal. Now we're learning something else, but that's absolutely true. Yep. Every idea is a good idea. Every idea is a good idea. Teamwork is funner. Teamwork is funner. <laughs> More that's funner. awesome. More funner. Yeah, I like funner. First idea is often the best idea. First idea is often the best idea. What we teach in our workshops is for people to get, they have judges, crit crit critics, and editors in their heads, and we tell them to get rid of them. Send them outside, they all smoke. Get them out there and pick them up after workshop. The judges are, are the, the critics are the people that criticize what other people do. We obviously don't want you to be doing that. The judges judge yourself. If you say, oh, I said something stupid. Ah, oh, you're shut down for about 10 minutes. And the editor is the one who goes, wow, I can't say that. Oh, that's not right. And you really don't want that to get in your way. They all play a very good role in normal life, but they also get in our way, too. And you have to recognize when the times are to kick those guys out of your head, whatever gender they are. Cool, what else? Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to fail. Failure's awesome. Thomas Edison failed a lot, some people think a thousand times, before he got the light bulb right. And it was only right for, you know, what, century or a little over a century? Now it's not as right. Things change. But he failed a lot. What else? We learned other things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Being creative is fun. I'm sorry? Being creative is fun. It is. Fun working to do with team. Team. Working, working team. Working a team is better. You like, come up with a de uh, design really fast. You can, actually. And um, sometimes the more you labor over stuff, uh, the less productive it is. That part of design thinking, remember, is lots of ideas, very quick, don't reject things early, prototype cheaply, try them out, try them out, try them out, and expect to fail. Plan for failure. We're all better at this than we thought. Absolutely. 
people come into these workshops thinking, uh, improv, uh, and you know, we don't go to the bank or the coffee shop with a script, do we? Usually not. We're improv improvising all of our relationships. I could teach you stuff that would completely, if you take our 101, you will learn something that will change your life involving status and what's really going on out there. Awesome. Everything's a status battle. Look it up on the internet. <laughs> Anything else? Cool. Can inspire each other? You do. Mm -hmm. You inspire me. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, cheap advertising before I let you go. There's postcards over there. It's not my picture on them. There are a few of my business cards next to it. <laughs> um, Sam Whittington, however, is a very, very funny man. Take that. We're at portlandcomedy.com. We shows mm -hmm. for the public Fridays and Saturdays uh, for kids of the 12 and under and their handlers uh, every third Sunday of the month. Uh, workshops, summer camps. We can come to your company. We can come to your school. We can come to your company school. We can do anywhere. Um, if you have an idea, call us. We'll talk about whether it makes sense or not. And uh, the other thing I want to leave you with is it's fun to run a for-profit theater. Weird, but fun. We have a very good time doing it. Uh, in whatever, we're always, I mean, we can get into situations that are just completely weird, and other people would punt, to use a football term, and we attack those situations and have a blast. Because we're saying yes, and other things. All right, cool. We're going to do a football close. As an owner of the Green Bay Packers, I feel like we have to do that. So it's like when the captain calls everybody in, put their hands in the middle, right? And on three, the captain has them get all fried or kill them or whatever they do. Um, and in Ray Lewis's case, it's really his kill him. And um, uh, on three, we're going to yell, each of us are going to yell a word that we're taking away from tonight's workshop. We're going to make a huge noise, disturb everybody in the building, but you're not even going to hear anybody else's word because we're all making this noise together. On three, ready? One, two, three. <laughs> cool. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, hey, first off, let's thanks, Pat. Um, with James M. Harrison, The Earth is Not Up to Code. It is a dispassionate investigation into the suitability of planet Earth for human habitation, uh, revealing that there are 10 to the 23rd power building code violations. From violations of shape to violations based on natural malice, the entire range of geological transgressions will be systematically categorized into a rigorous framework. Using this framework, it will be possible to devise strategies for clearing the backlog of violations with bureaucratic efficiency. Uh, James has made a career of taking the craft uh, practices of one genre and incorrectly breeding them with the craft practices of a different genre. So it's going to be awesome. All right. Thanks again, James. You guys. Thank you. Take the postcard. Yeah,